day, reading your news bulletin at this hour is Gail Vasaki. Leading stories at this hour, Education MEC to give brief on school feeder zones. Praveen Gordon's meeting with public protector went well. And S compends new coal deals but cannot guarantee keeping lights on. The Gauteng MEC of Education, Mr. Panyaza Lisufi, will today brief the media regarding the new developed school feeder zones. Our field reporter, Precious Mola, filed this report. Gauteng MEC for Education, Panyaza Lisufi, is today briefing the media regarding the new legislature for school feeder zones right here at the Department of Education in Johannesburg Central. This comes after the High Court ruling which states that Lusufi should revise and develop a new legislature regarding the school feeder zone. Currently, the school feeder zone stated that only people who stays within the radius of five kilometers should be accepted to certain schools while others should not be accepted. But today, the 15th of November, five days ahead, we are publicizing uh, these feeder zones uh, and we are proud and thrilled as a department that would have met uh, the constitutional court deadline. We didn't say because we won the court case, we really believe on our own, we should sit and determine these feeder zones. Uh, we took a democratic posture uh, to say, let us be all inclusive. So we then invited all organizations, those that took us to court, those that are NGOs, that have an interest in education, to say, let's establish a task team that will advise the MEC and the department of these new feeder zones. And that task team included FETSAS, uh, the National Association of School Governing Bodies, a Governing Body Foundation, Equal Education, the Office of the Premier, because the Office of the Premier is in charge of special planning in our province, uh, the Demarcation Board, and all this organization assisted us to navigate the complexity of this particular. Lisufi says they were transparent in their consultative processes and they are confident on the outcome they have reached since they have underwent such intense process to get to this point. It's something that we are proud that was a process of intensive, extensive and robust debates and discussions. And that is why we are sometimes taken aback by threats of some of the organizations that were part of this process that they really believe that they need to stop this process. But I'm not going to entertain that. Our underlying line is very simple. All our schools belong to all South Africans. It must not be that we are fortunate to be uh, born in an area that has many schools. Those that were unfortunate to be born in an area that have fewer schools, that all these schools can be shared. That's our bottom line. He says every school will now have to resubmit their new policy to the department regarding their admission requirements. He says, however, the policy does not include specialized schools. Every school policy must now be resubmitted to the department. So, so any, any school that had a policy on language, had a policy on admissions, had a financial policy, had a policy on school uniform, had a policy on hair, had a policy on anything, they must now resubmit those policies to the department. The MEC says they have scrapped the five kilometer radius policy and now they are operating on a 30 kilometer radius. However, he says this policy cannot exclude any people anywhere in the province although the preference will be given to those who are within the community that the school is located. I'm Precious Molam, Jobek TV News, Johannesburg. Public Enterprise Minister Praveen Gordon's lawyer says his meeting with the public protector went well but has once again reiterated that she must present preliminary evidence if she wants him to answer to a misconduct case. On Wednesday, Gordon met with Busisiwe Mkwebani in Pretoria after he was subpoenaed to explain details around the approval of former South African Revenue Service Deputy Commissioner Ivan Pillay's early retirement package. 
Pele and Gordon were charged with fraud and corruption in 2016 related to the matter, but the charges were later withdrawn when evidence revealed that there was no wrongdoing. The minister this week dismissed claims that he failed to respond to Mkwabani's request for more information to assist with the investigation. ESCOM can't guarantee the country won't be plunged into darkness before the end of the year. The power utility says it has signed 40 new contracts to replenish its dwindling coal stockpiles. It has been using diesel to alleviate pressure on some of its stock power stations to avoid rolling blackouts. Spokesperson Kulu Pasiwe said the power utility is likely to recover by the first quarter of next year in terms of bringing the stock levels in those power stations back to back to normal around that time. And that's it from myself and the Joburg TV news team. Goodbye.